From the beginning of spaceflight, it was clear that space is a risky endeavor and we need to prepare for also emergency situations and survival situations. As ESA astronauts, we learned during basic training generic survival skills. For example, a capsule might land in the winter uh, area in Russia and then I need to be able to survive. So one famous situation was uh, the return from space of the very first Russian spacewalker, Leonov. They landed not on the area that was foreseen, in a, an ice-cold winter area. And they needed to survive for more than one day, one night out in the cold. And that was when uh, training astronauts' survival skills was triggered. During basic training, we practiced this. We went to Sweden, for example, and had to survive there out in the cold. This means you need to be able to make a fire to stay warm. We have certain equipment on board of the Soyuz that allows us to cut wood and to uh, produce or to make a fire. You need to be able to make a shelter to protect you against wind, against snowfall or rain. So we learn how to make a, a bivouac and how to uh, stay warm and healthy and safe for at least 48 hours until we can get rescued. There was one case when the Soyuz capsule actually landed in the water. Soyuz 23 overshot the uh, foreseen landing area and landed in a really icy lake and the cosmonauts needed to survive for many hours until they were rescued by a helicopter that pulled the capsule out of this icy lake. As ESA astronauts, we also learn basic skills how to survive on the sea. This training is run in Rostock, and there we learn from professional seamen how to survive in a sea emergency situation. There we learned how to use standard equipment that you can find on any ship. There's an emergency um, food package and an emergency drinking package so that I can uh, stay alive for several hours, several days if needed and um, I can also signal to uh, my environment, okay, here I am, uh, I'm in an emergency situation, come and rescue me. We come back from space as a team, and as a team we will also act during the emergency situation. Then only in a team you are successful. You stay together to make decisions, to stay warm and close, and you help each other. One very demanding exercise that we had to perform was move in a very confined space, completely dark, lots of noise, like in a panic situation, um, and, and there was even heat. And in this situation we had to remain calm and we had to rescue a colleague that was uh, unconscious. In our case it was a puppet that we needed to rescue and bring out of this confined environment, a very difficult path that we had to find our way through, kind of a labyrinth. Emergency situations in space also entail fire. So that's why we learn how to fight fire in a closed environment. For example, we learned different techniques. We have different fire hoses, fire extinguishing equipment, but we also need to move in on confined environment. And that's what we learn also during like generic firefighting drills like we did in Rostock. One of the exchange programs that we had with China was how to uh, survive if the Chinese capsule lands on the sea. And that training we uh, performed together with Chinese taikonauts uh, and we were together in the capsule. The first step was the same. We had to change from our pressure suit into our sea survival suit. I was the last to leave the capsule and I jumped outside, got into the boat and uh, stayed together with my Chinese taikonaut colleague and we initiated the immediate survival procedure. So we started the second phase of our survival procedure. That was to stay alive during an um, extended period of time. 
marking the environment with color so that planes that pass by could spot us from above. Also, we had to apply a, a shark repellent. So there we practiced two scenarios. One was a big sea survival boat came um, and fished us out of the water. And um, the second scenario was a helicopter came and uh, pulled us up from the, the water and inside the helicopter. <laughs>